السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين First of all, uh, I would like to thank MCC for hosting me to start this beautiful new series entitled Perils of Islam The Wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And uh, I would like to pass a special welcome uh, to everyone who is virtually attending these classes, which will be uh, once a week for uh, nine weeks, inshallah. Uh, before we go any further, I would want everyone just to, when whenever you hear uh, the name of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so whenever you, name the, uh, you hear the name of Muhammad or Sayyidina Muhammad, just to follow it immediately with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In these classes, we are, inshallah, going to traverse the backgrounds of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their marvels, their etiquette and manners, uh, their utter devotion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, I will be depending uh, on uh, several resource, resources, but one of them is the uh, compendium of the sources of the prophetic narrative. And that was written by uh, Samira Zayed, may Allah have mercy upon her. She died recently. And um, this book actually was translated, uh, it was published, I think, in 2018. And uh, uh, I was the project manager for finishing, for, for getting this book translated, actually. And it took us about 10 years to finish this book. So alhamdulillah, um, uh, I will be uh, depending on this resource. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, other many other resources. So um, in these, uh, this series, inshallah, enlightens the minds, uh, brightens the souls, and shines the hearts. So when we hear about the wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will learn a lot. So if a Muslim woman one, uh, uh, if, uh, if a Muslim woman foot follows the footsteps of the mothers of the believers, then she can contribute vastly to, to the Islamic work and to the Islamic world. So each of us, girls, moms, daughters, wives, teachers, um, with, with all uh, female roles, we all can learn a lot from the mothers, the, the mothers of the believers. Men can follow their footsteps too. So everyone can learn a lot to live successfully in this life and be winners in the life after. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned the uh, wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Holy Quran when he said, Ya Nisa al-Nabiyy lastunna ka ahadim bin al-Nisa. You are not like, oh, uh, woman of uh, Muhammad, you are not like any woman who lived or who are living or who will live in this life. You women 
uh, 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 the wives of the Prophet, you are unique. You completely submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a woman, ask yourself, how do I successfully contribute to, the, to, to my family and to my community? If you want to know how to do this successfully, then look at the lives of the mothers of the believers and learn from them. So we have to know, we have to learn about them. We have to know what they did. We have to know how they contribute, how uh, we have to know their contributions, how they contributed, what they did. So we can follow them and consider them as our models. And inshallah, today we will be starting with the first wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khadija bint Khuwaylid. If we look at the lineage of Sayyidina Khadija and the lineage of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find that they meet, they both meet in Lu'ay. So Khadija radiallahu anha was related to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So who is, who is Khadija radiallahu anha? Who is this woman? Who is this amazing uh, mother of uh, believers? She's the master of the noble woman of Quraysh. This was one of her titles. Sayyidatu Nisa'i Quraysh. Another title was At-Tahira, the pure woman. Another title was the noble woman or the complete woman. So how, how nice it feels. How it feels so good to talk about Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. So she was the woman who was chosen out of the woman in the world just to be next to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the first woman, the first pe person actually, men and women, she was the first one to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to support him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen her to be the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to be a mother for all the Muslim uh, uh, men and women. Ummul Mu'mineen. She was the wife who uh, gave birth to his six children. So... She gave birth to At-Tahir and At-Tayyib, the sons of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who but they, they, they died early in uh, very uh, at a very young age. She was the mother of Zainab, Ruqiya, Umm Kulthum, and Fatima radiallahu anhum jami'an. So who is this amazing woman to raise such amazing children? So this is a very important lesson that the role of a great mom is to raise great children. So Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, uh, one day uh, she, she was sitting with a group of the noble uh, uh, women of Quraysh. They were sitting um, close to the Kaaba and they were chit-chatting. And suddenly a man came and he stopped at that gathering and he said to them, Ya Nisa Atayma, 
إنه سيكون في بلد كن نبي يقال له أحمد يبعث برسالة الله فأي من رأة استطاعت أن تكون له زوجا فلتفعل So he said to them, oh woman of Tayma, the, the, there would be uh, a prophet in your, in your city, in your country. His name will be Ahmed. And he will be, uh, 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 a message will be revealed to him. So any one of you, if, if she can be a wife, his wife, then do it. So the women started to laugh and started to mock that man. And some, uh, one of them just uh, took um, uh, a, small, uh, a pebble and she threw him. And, and except for one woman out of all these ladies, she, sta- she, she was uh, just listening wisely and calmly. And she was thinking about the words of that man. And this was Khadija bint Khuwaylid, radiallahu anha, the wise lady, the wise, noble lady, the pure woman. So Khadija, radiallahu anha, uh, was of a very noble uh, family and they were very rich, so wealthy. And she was known in Mecca to be a wise, generous, noble woman. So she got married to someone whose name is Abu Hala and she lived with him for a short time, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, gave, gave both of them uh, a son whose name was Hind. And then when Abu Hala died, she married Utayyah ibn Abid and she got another child. But again, Utayyah uh, well, uh, died and then she did not want to get married after that. So she, she just wanted to raise her children, to be uh, a good mom. And of course, she was a very uh, successful businesswoman. So she wanted to take care of her family and of her business. So Khadija, radiallahu anha, used to hire men to uh, to be in charge of her caravans setting off to Sham and to Yemen trading for her. And sometimes the uh, those people were not as honest as they should be. So uh, she was looking for someone who was trustworthy. And she heard about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was known to be al-ameen, the trustworthy, the truthful. So she, she, she called him. She wanted to, to uh, work with him. She wanted to hire him. And they agreed, and she sent her uh, um, uh, a sl- uh, one, one of her slaves, whose name was Maysara, to accompany Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, so he would make sure that he's doing a good job, that everything uh, is going well. So Maysara accompanied Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to uh, this uh, journey, setting off to Sham. And Maysara, Maysara saw a lot of things that he never uh, saw with any other person 
who would go and trade for Khadija. So he was impressed. He was impressed with how he uh, uh, does business. He was impressed with his manners, with his character. And he was so impressed with how uh, blessed Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was. And one time they were, uh, they, they got tired and they wanted to rest. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat under the shade of a, tr a tree. There was a monk in that area. He looked at Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with uh, um, a very uh, strong, strange look. And he said to Maisara, who is this person? And Maisara told him he is a merchant, he is from Quraysh, and we, he, he is taking care of trade for someone. And the monk said, ما نزل تحت هذه الشجرة إلا نبي. None rests here under the shade of this tree except but a prophet. So Mekhsara was impressed. And so, along, along the way, Mekhsara also noticed that mm -hmm. there is a cloud shading Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from the heat of the sun. And by the end of the journey, Maisara fell in love with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He began to love him. And when they got back to Mecca, he, he said to him, go, go quickly, go and tell uh, Khadija of, uh, of what, what happened. So they came back. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, gave back with abundant prophet. She never had such a prophet. And she gave Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, uh, double of what she used to give other people. And she gave him double of what they both agreed on. And she was she had a great interest to listen to Maisara talking about the character of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu and about the blessings that he has seen. So if we stop here for a second, we, know, we notice several points. If you have a business, you need to have trustworthy people to work with you. You need people who who are who deserve your trust so that you, they fulfill the amana. So what happened? Khadija radiallahu anha was able to choose and to decide to send Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this uh, uh, for uh, to trade for her. So she had uh, an insight, a bright insight to, to know that, yes, he is the one who people are talking about, whom people are talking about, and he is trustworthy, really. That was the outcome she came with immediately when she saw him. And she sent someone who is able to, to get to, who is intelligent. Maisara was the first person to notice the miracles of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was so surprised to see that cloud uh, shading Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam along the way. So Khadija radiallahu anha realized that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is not the same as, as, as any other person. So 
she was thinking and she remembered, of course, that man who told them there will be a prophet. So try to be a wife to that prophet. But how can she do that? She went, she, she went to her friend, Nafisa. And she told her, she told her that uh, the, the whole story. And she told her that, she showed her that she is interested in Muhammad radiallahu anhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the good sahaba, what did Nafisa do radiallahu anhu? She, she went directly to see the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She talked to him and she said, what's stopping you from getting married? And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, I cannot afford it. So there is no way I can be financially able to support her. And she said, what about if you are not asked to support or to give anything? And he, he said, Sayyidina Muhammad said, then how, how can that be? She said, if you are not asked for anything, and if you are, if, if the wife is beautiful, uh, wealthy, honored, noble, and would you accept? And he said, who is she? And she said, Khadija. So, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, of course, uh, told her that I have to talk to my uncles, but he, he showed acceptance. And the blessed marriage was completed by the attendance of Abu Talib, Hamza, Wal Abbas, Wawarq ibn Nawfal, and the new chapter of life start, just started. Khadija radiallahu anha was 40 years old and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was 25 years old. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the happiest, gave them the best life as a husband and a wife. Khadija radiallahu anha sacrificed everything and she supported Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with everything everything that she, she, she can support him with. And of course, we know that in the household where all the children were born, uh, Zaydu ibn Haritha was uh, uh, the servant. He was living in the house. Uh, we know that uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam brought him from his uncle because his uncle was so poor. So he brought him with Jafar just to live with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam and this blessed family. So subhanAllah, Khadija radiallahu anha used to be the best wife. She would, she would support her husband with everything. She would help him. She, she, she would take care of the house, of the children, of everything. She was so smart, so intelligent that everything was performed by her in the best way. Later on, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love seclusion. And he used to go to, to the cave of Garu Hira and to stay uh, days and sometimes a month there. And she would cook for him, uh, bring him food or send food with, uh, with, with, with someone to him. She was caring, a caring wife, a loving wife. Until one day, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was revealed too when uh, um, Sayyidina Jibreel told him, Iqra. And we all know the story. 
and what happened to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how, how scared he was. And he came back rushing to his wife. So he came to Khadija radiallahu anha and said, cover me, cover me. So, and they covered him until his fear was over. And after that, he told, he told Khadija radiallahu anha everything. He told her everything that has happened to him. And he said, I fear that something may, 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 may happen to me. And what was her answer? She comforted him. She, she, she made him feel that be strong. You are truthful. She said to him, Kalla, wallahi ma yukhzika Allahu abada, inna kala tasilu rahim, wa tahmilu al-kal, wa taksibu al-ma'adum, wa tuqri al-dayf, wa tu'inu ala nawaib al-haq. So she said, never, by Allah, so when he said to her, I, I fear that something may happen to me, she said, no, never. By Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. You keep good relations with your kins. You, you help the poor. You, you serve your guests generously. You assist everyone who, 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 who is in calamity. You are a good person. So she called him and she assured him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never let him down. Then this wife, wise wife, she went and she, she, she took Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she went to her cousin Waraq ibn Nawfal, who during the Islamic period became Christian pre-Islamic, sorry, pre-Islamic period, he became a Christian. And he used to be very wise, very intelligent. Uh, he, ha he knew Hebrew, he knew Arabic. He was, he was very smart. But at that time, he was an old man and he had lost his eyesight. So Khadija said to Waraka, listen to the story of, my, uh, of your nephew, of my husband. And when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described what, 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 he, what he had seen, Waraka said, this is the same one who keeps the secret. And he means angel Jibreel, radiallahu anh, Sayyidina Jibreel. So this is the same one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent to Moses. I wish I were young and I could live up to the time when your people will kick you out, will turn you out. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, will they drive me out? And Waraka replied affirmatively, he said, any man who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with, with hostility. And if I should remain alive till the day when, when, you will be, when you will be turned out, then I would support you strongly. But Waraka died a few, a few days after. Subhanallah. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that it will be a challenge. He knew that this would be a hard mission. But who was with him? <clears throat> who was supporting him? His wife. His wife was supporting him. So this was what she did. When she, when, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was revealed to with the, with the message, then she was the first person to believe in him. And everyone 
of the house, in the house of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, followed. She was the first to, to listen to the, to the ayahs that were revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Jibreel Alaihi Salam. When Jibreel Alayhi Salam taught Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how to, how to make wudu and how to pray, she was the first of those who prayed with him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was the faithful wife. She was the supportive wife. She was the complete person. And this is what we want for our woman for our Muslim women. This is why we learn about these amazing people that we have to be like them. It's not just stories that are being narrated and that are being read. No, we have to get the lesson out of these stories. Then when it was, uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu was ordered to call for Islam uh, in public, Quraysh wanted to, to uh, uh, harm Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they did that with his two daughters. Abu Lahab, his uncle who was so, so mean to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his two sons married the two daughters of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ruqiyah and Ubudhu, before, before the uh, message. But when, when uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called people for, for Islam, then his uncle asked, ordered his two sons to divorce the uh, two daughters of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who was overwatching this? The mom, Khadija Radiallahu Anha. Soon after, Ruqiyya Radiallahu Anha was married to Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never leave the oppressed without any reward. So years passed and Khadija radiallahu anha was witnessing events one after the other. And supporting Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, practicing patience, uh, 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 calming Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He never heard a word that, would, that was not good from Khadija radiallahu anha. She was always the best person. And that's why she deserved the glad tiding uh, the good news of Sayyidina Muhammad from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that news, that good news was sent to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through Jibreel alayhi salam. When he said to Sayyidina Muhammad, Abli Khadija min Allah salam, tell Khadija. So the, the hadith says, هذه خديجة. أتتك بإناء فيه طعام. So سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم was sitting in the uh, in the غار in the cave and خديجة came. So جبريل عليه السلام said to to سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, uh, this is خديجة coming to you with a container holding meat soup or some kind of food or drink. هذه خديجة أتتك بإناء فيه طعام أو إناء فيه شراب فأقرئها من ربها السلام So when she reaches to you, greet her on behalf of her Lord. Oh my God, imagine a greeting from Allah سبحانه وتعالى فأقرئها من ربها السلام وبشرها ببيت من قصب لا صخب فيه ولا نصب and on my behalf so, she, so greet her on behalf of her lord and on my behalf and give her the good news of a house in paradise of a palace in paradise that 
uh, that is made up of qasab. Qasab is the whole pearl jewels. So this house looks like a splendid palace where there will be no noise or fatigue. So this is the Bushra for Sayyid Khadija radiallahu And then later on, it was the ninth year of the, of the uh, calling of Islam, of, of Ba'tha. Then Quraysh decided to boycott Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions in the mountain. And Khadija radiallahu anha, she was, she was an old lady and she, uh, she, she, she just uh, was so patient. So now the lady who used to feed people and to make them full would not be able to, to be full herself. She would, she would go, she would sleep hungry. She was weak, but her faith was strong. Her love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to his message was unbelievable. No words can describe that love. And that was the reason for her to be so patient and strong. She would feel so sad and, and, and so uh, upset when, when she would uh, uh, see how Quraysh are uh, opposing Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and harming him and his companions. She would say, I wish, I wish I knew that the, the people of uh, Mecca knew what I know about, about the messenger of Allah. Only if they know that, if they realize that, they would sacrifice their lives for him. But there was a veil on their sight. Their inner sight was dark and they, they didn't have an inner sight. So it was a three years of boycott. And Khadija radiallahu anha was getting weaker day after day after day. She was in her about 65 years old. And the only thing that would make her get stronger was the words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the, the promising words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there will be victory even after, after, after time. So, so her faith would get stronger. She would want to, she was, she, she was wishing that she would get, uh, she would be alive when she, when she would see that victory. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had an end for her life. Whatever has a beginning will have an end. And it was, just uh, within a short time after the boycott was uh, released, after the Muslims were back to their homes, that just a few, a very, a very short time that she passed away. The uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, also passed away. So it was at the same year that he lost his uh, outer support, his uncle, and his inner support inside his house, his wife. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his children were, his daughters were crying when Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha passed away. But she was radiyatan mardiyya. 
She was happy. She was content. She was of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, radiyallahu anhum wa an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was the mom, she was the wife, she was the, the aunt, she was the mother of the believers. So Khadija did not, Khadija radiallahu anha did not witness the victory, but she was promised of it. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never forgot Khadija. And he used to say, Amanat bi is kafara bi nas. She believed me when people did not believe me. Wasadakatni is kazebani nas. She 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 was truthful. She she accepted me. She accepted my words when my when when people belied me. Mm. وَوَاسَتْنِي بِمَالِهَا إِذْ حَرَمَنِ النَّاسِ She supported me of her money when people deprived me. وَرَزَقَنِيَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ وَلَدَهَا إِذْ حَرَمَنِي أَوْلَادَ النِّسَاءِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the, her, the children from her when, I, no, uh, when the other woman did not give, me, give birth to my children, to any children except for Maria who had one child. So this was the first Muslim woman, the first Muslim Sahabiya at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was the first mother of the believers. She was Ummu Zahra, Wajad, in, 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 the mother of Al-Zahra, Fatima radiallahu anha. She's the grandmother of Al Hassan Wal Hussein, radiallahu anhum, and, and the other uh, grandchildren. She is, and she was, and she will be the, the master, the, the noble woman. See, the Muhammad <clears throat> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خير النساء في زمانها. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu said about Khadija radiallahu anha. The best woman in her time. In another narration, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خير النساء في الجنة. The best woman in paradise. So, this was the first wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After her death, when Sayyidina, whenever Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have something special, he would say, send this to, to the family of Khadija. He would always remember her. He was so faithful to her. This was Khadija radiallahu anha. A lot of things we have to learn from Khadija radiallahu anha. How to be a good wife, how to be a good mom, how to be a good companion, how to be the best. So this, with this, I will end the first session of the Pearls of Islam the wives of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, the wives of the best of the creation, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Habibi Ya Rasulullah, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reunite us with with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with his wives, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala enlighten our hearts to receive the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of uh, everything, everybody that was 
uh, helping and supporting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was a Sayyida Khadija radiyallahu anha, the first of our, uh, the first mother of believers in this series. Insha'Allah, we will meet again next week. Wa sallallahu ma'ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.